Okay, next up, I want to complete the Lewis structure for urea, showing all valence electrons, predict the bond angle about C and N, what is the most polar bond in the molecule, and is urea polar or nonpolar? So first, I count my valence electrons. I have two nitrogens, so two by five plus four by one plus four plus six. And that is going to give me 10 plus 4 plus 10. So I have 24 electrons to distribute. And so with the structure that they've given us here, let's find out how many electrons they have in it. So the structure has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 electrons. And so clearly that doesn't meet the 24 that have been asked of us. And so we can fix this by adding two electrons on each of the nitrogens to fill in the octets. So now we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So we still don't have um, enough electrons. Sorry, just one moment. And so now that we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, I still have four electrons to put somewhere. I can see hydrogen has made the one bond it likes to make. Nitrogen's octet is full. Carbon's octet is full, which leaves me with only one place to play one, which leaves me with only one place to put the four electrons, and that's on the oxygen. And so this is going to be our final valence, um, sorry, final Lewis structure, showing all of our valence electrons. Next up, we like to predict the bond angle about each carbon and nitrogen. So first, we need to find out the hybridization for each of our groups here. So we can figure out its geometry. And so our carbon has made has three terminal groups, and so it is going to be sp2 hybridized. So that indicates a trigonal planar structure. And on our nitrogens, they have one, two, three plus one terminal group, because it's a lone pair. That is going to indicate that it is sp3. You'd expect tetrahedral, but you need to include the fact that it has the one lone pair. And so it is going to be trigonal pyramid. You can double check on the Vesper chart to ensure that those are all correct. So we see trigonal pyramid if it's one lone pair and four groups, and trigonal planar if it's three groups and zero lone pairs. And so around the um, carbon to nitrogen group, I would expect a bond angle of about 120 is the ideal angle, but I need to factor in the fact that there are these lone pairs on the oxygen that are going to push this angle to be a little bit over 120. And these, so a little bit over 120, and that's gonna leave this angle to be less than 120. And then with the um, nitrogen to hydrogen bond, if it's tetrahedral, you expect a bond angle of 109.5, but there's again, this lone pair that is um, messing up the symmetry. And so between the nitrogen and hydrogens, I will expect an angle less than 109.5. But where the, where the lone pair is, I'd expect it to be over 109.5.
And then lastly, they're asking for the most polar bond in the molecule. And so I have a CO bond, a CN bond, an NH bond. Those are the three types of bonds I have. I can determine um, which one is the most polar by determining the difference in electronegativity. And I can do that by just pulling in um, So if you just um, look at the electronegativity values, the CO bond will have a difference in electronegativity of 3.44 minus 2.56. And that is going to give me 0 0.88. The carbon-nitrogen bond will have a difference in electronegativity of 3.04 minus 2.56. And that is going to give me 0 0.48. This difference in electronegativity is under the difference in electronegativity for C and O. So C and O is more electronegative than the CN bond. Let's check the nitrogen-hydrogen bond. And so that is going to be 3.04 minus 2.20. And that is going to give me 0 0.84. So the most polar bonds are going to be the CO and the NH bond. The most polar bond overall is going to be the CO bond. And then lastly, we want to determine whether the whether urea is polar or nonpolar. So let's go about drawing what its structure should look like. When you know the Vesper theory around the central atoms. And so start with the trigonal planar nature of the CO to CN bonds. And then you have to factor in the trigonal pyramid nature of the um, N to H bonds. And so you're going to have the lone pair above it. You have the C group. And you'll have one H coming out and one H going to the back. The same thing here. Okay, now you draw your dipole moments. Right, let's just include all of the valence electrons. So your net dipole moments. So we know nitrogen is more polar. The lone pair is more polar. Between carbon and nitrogen, nitrogen is more polar. Okay, now, um, if you include the fact that these dipoles are not equal because the difference in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen is different from that between carbon and nitrogen, you can already tell these dipoles will not cancel and you will get a polar molecule. Or you could just alternatively factor in the fact that the dipoles do not completely cancel. So for example, um, these three groups would lead to a vector pointing up and you also have the vector pointing up because of the lone pair. These two cannot cancel each other, so you will have a dipole moment around this group and around this group. Here, the dipoles, if they were equal, would cancel, but they are not. So you will also have a dipole moment around this group, meaning my final molecule is going to be polar. And that's going to be your final answer for this one.